What sort of imprint will Joe Biden leave on this city? A man who's been shaped by Washington during 36 years in the Senate and eight years as vice president. He may soon have the chance to shape the United States. If Joe Biden wins, he'll not only be the oldest person ever to become president of the United States, he'll also have got there with the least scrutiny of any modern candidates. For many Americans, the fact that he's not Donald Trump is enough to win their vote. But if he wins, what then? How does he intend to occupy the most powerful office in the world? What does he intend to do? Sure, give me your phone. I'll take your phone you guys. Biden ran in the primaries as the politician he's been for 40 years, a moderate centrist. His offer, essentially an extension of the Obama years, a return to decency and normalcy. But the Democratic Party's base is decidedly more radical these days, more ambitious, their support more conditional. The one note of caution that I hope the Biden and Harris teams would take to heart right now is not to mistake their performance in this election for pro-Biden, pro-Harris enthusiasm. Right now, I think there, there's tremendous enthusiasm to get rid of Donald Trump, um, but it's really going to be incumbent on them post-election to earn the support and earn the trust of progressives who, who really are the majority of the Democratic Party. The view among many leading Democrats is that Hillary Clinton lost in 2016 in part because she alienated supporters of Bernie Sanders when she defeated him for the nomination. They jeered her at the convention and many then refused to vote for her in the election. Come on, give me a break. No, I won't, won't give you a break on this one, Joe. You... When Joe Biden defeated Bernie Sanders for the nomination this time, he was determined not to repeat Clinton's mistake. The Biden and Sanders campaigns formed a unity task force over the summer to thrash out a compromise program for government in return for Senator Sanders' endorsement. I think the compromise that uh, they came up with, if implemented, will make Biden the most progressive president uh, since FDR. The 110-page document, released with little fanfare, outlines plans in six areas, climate and environment, criminal justice, the economy, education, health care and immigration. It's very ambitious, but mostly uncosted and unfunded, and it sounds expensive. For a start, there's a federal New Deal-style jobs program, unprecedented investment in infrastructure and free universal education for all three- and four-year-olds. On the environment, there's a promise for the US to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible and no later than 2050. And just one measure, a promise to replace the entire fleet of 500,000 school buses with American-made zero emissions alternatives within five years, could cost upwards of $100 billion on its own. The real interesting story of 2021 is going to be whether Joe Biden is actually in charge of the agenda or a much more progressive Democratic Congress is in charge of the agenda. Um, Joe Biden, by his nature, is a centrist. He's a deal maker. He wants to uh, build consensus. But the party has really been taken over by the far left. The, the, the environmental agenda, the tax agenda, uh, you name it, healthcare in particular, is going to be very volatile. Uh, and they're demanding big, big change. There's evidence that the Biden campaign has sought to reassure corporate America that it won't be pursuing the more radical aspects of the deal with Sanders. I reported at the Washington Post on a conference call that um, Biden's people had with um, big Wall Street figures, where the Wall Street figures were saying, gosh, we're a little bit concerned about some of the things in this um, you know, unity task force plan and the Biden people were saying, oh, no, 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 don't worry, don't worry. That's not that's not something that we're really behind. And Biden's campaign, you know, more or less confirmed that anecdote. So they're they're OK. They've been campaigning to the center. Um, and so there is this sort of nervousness on the left that when he gets in, he's not going to have these big, bold plans. Evidence of that nervousness is obvious. Just last week, a group of progressive congressmen and women sent a letter warning the Democratic leadership not to appoint any former lobbyists or corporate executives to Joe Biden's administration if he wins. A lot of progressives are going to be watching very carefully to see the personnel choices, to see 
who will be um, cabinet secretaries, who will be staffing the government. We believe that after unprecedented corruption under Donald Trump, that the best way to show the Democrats are different and the best way for Joe Biden to show a break from Donald Trump is to have a government that is clean and free of, of even the whiff of corruption. Even if Joe Biden decides he wants to launch a legislative revolution in the United States, there are still plenty of barriers to him getting anything done. It looks entirely possible that the Democrats could retake the Senate, but in the Senate, a simple majority is not enough. I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. This is filibustering. It takes the votes of 60 senators to end a debate. Otherwise, opponents of legislation can just keep talking about whatever they like. I do not like them, Sam, I am. There's a huge appetite within the Democratic Party to change the Senate rules to end the filibuster. And while they're at it, deal with the conservative majority on the Supreme Court by appointing new justices to create a progressive majority. But if Joe Biden were to give his views on the filibuster or appointing additional justices, he'd either antagonize his base or the swing voters he may need at this election. So instead, we get this. This is the number one thing that I've been asked about from viewers uh, in the past couple of days. Well, you've been asked by the viewers who are probably Republicans who don't want me continuing to talk about what they're doing to the court right now. Well, sir, don't the voters deserve to know no, where No, they don't. Stand? I'm not going to play his game. Americans do deserve to know the answers to these questions. Uh, you know, absolutely. Should they know, is, is Joe Biden ready to pack the courts? Yeah, that, that's a good question that he ought to have a straightforward answer to. Typically, when you're running, you want to get some type of permission from the voters. Here's what I'm doing. Here's so you understand what I'm for. This election has just, for a number of reasons, been defined completely differently. And so by the time that he actually takes over, I think most people will have not really paid much attention to it. And that is, that, that, that is potentially what gets you in trouble when voters don't really know what you have planned. According to the polls, it will be Joe Biden who gets to stand on the inauguration stage being built on the Capitol steps. The platform he's standing on in the election, though, has received far less attention. Delaying difficult policy choices, and with them difficult battles within his party, they make sense now, but it doesn't make them disappear.